At last I can share with you the amazing lineup for season four of Folk on Foot. We have six monthly episodes featuring some extraordinary performers walking in beautiful parts of the country. For our most northerly episode ever, we are on Orkney with the guitarist, singer and songwriter Chris Drever. He stands on the shore of Scapa Flow to tell us the dramatic story of the scuttling of the entire German navy there at the end of the First World War. They had the second biggest navy in the world after the British navy. So they were kind of negotiating to see how to split all that ordnance up. So they thought at best of it was crewed by Germans until they got that done. So all these mutineers ended up back on board the ships with the officers they'd mutinied against three days earlier on their way to Orkney to Scapa Flow and they were interned the whole fleet here for about six months. It took 20 years to build this fleet Four years to lose the war Millions dead and no one knows What the dying was all for Six months since the killing stopped, we were still anchored here. So there were 70 ships yeah. in the sea just there, yeah. under guard presumably by yes, the British Navy. that's right. How did the sailors, the German sailors, cope with those conditions of being kept here under captivity while the bigwigs decided what to do with them? Well, I think it was really, really hard. They weren't allowed off the ships, they weren't allowed radios, they weren't allowed newspapers, we didn't feed them. They relied on food parcels from Germany, can you imagine, at a time when there must have been virtually no infrastructure at all. So they were hungry, cramped, and they were smelly. I think soap was hard to come by and fresh water. We were ragged, we were dirty, though we knew we didn't care. Our only flag was a linen rag, as lank and lousy as our hair. They ran off with our gold One day I robbed an officer I sold his iron cross for soul Maybe a country rose and fell In Oldenburg, God only knows And all we saw was the rise and fall Of the tides in Scapa Flow Chris Drever on Orkney, where he was born and brought up. On a wet and windy day, Bella Hardy takes us for a bracing walk through the glorious Edale Valley in the Peak District, which has cast its spell on her life and music. What is it about the place that you love so much? Because you're here still, you haven't left. You know, well, so I, some I did people... get away for a bit. Yeah. I did escape briefly. Um, I mean, look at it. <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> even, in the even rain, on a wet day. I actually really love the wet days because there's a certain gloomy atmosphere you get to the... It all gets a bit withering height as, as soon as the rain starts coming down. It's fantastically gloomy. And has being here really influenced the kind of music that you've made? Have you picked up on music from this area, for example? I certainly have picked up on music from this area. I think in a more general way, it's very hard to tell at the time that you are being thoroughly influenced by what's around you, but when I listen back to my albums, it gets mentioned again and again and again at Edale in some reference or other, whether it's one of the landmarks or quite often kind of my valley turns up. There's a song about stars in China where all of a sudden I'm talking about Edale. <laughs> <laughs> And you, and you wrote a whole album, I wrote a whole album The Dark well. Peak and the White. Yeah, well, I, I've always, you know, loved traditional music. I come from a ballad singing background, a traditional music background. And we have local carols here. I think I'll probably sing you a local carol, actually. Oh, that would um, be great. From Castleton, because we have North Derbyshire, South Yorkshire carols. And there wasn't really any other songs I knew from the area, so I kind of I actually started 
by going on Google Books and trying to find things with references to Edale or local places. And I found the Derbyshire Ballads in Google Books first. Right. We're right by the train line here. Look, the train's going past. Uh -huh. The train is our lifeline. <laughs> it used to be a milk train many years ago. It used to come in and collect the milk when there was dairies all up and down the Edale. No dairy left, sadly. So you started researching songs from, yes. from this area? Yep. And I found this book, The Ballads and Songs of Derbyshire, and that had a good few from the Peak District. Down in yon forest there stands a hole The bells of paradise, I heard them ring It's covered all over And I love my Lord Jesus above anything. Bella Hardy in Edale. While on the outskirts of Oxford, the great Peggy Seeger tucks her arm in mine and leads me on a stroll around the picturesque village of Ifley, where she's made her home. Between visiting the community shop and the church, she reflects on her extraordinary life in music, starting with her mother's role transcribing American folk for the song collector Alan Lomax, continuing through her own creative and personal partnership with Ewan McCall, and on to her political campaigning. She tells me how one encounter led to a memorable song. I met Jennifer Jones at Greenham Common. It was a big demonstration, 30,000 women, and about 6,000 police. You might have noticed on my um, mantle in the other room, I have a piece of Greenham Common fence. Yeah, it's a treasured piece. And uh, I saw Jennifer Jones in the middle of this melee of fighting police and women and everything. And she, w she was in a wheelchair, and she would have been about 55 or 60, and her friends were helping her hold the bolt cutters so she could bolt cut through the fence. I tried bolt cutters, they're delicious. <laughs> they're wonderful, you know. I kept a pair down uh, and once, you know, it got trouble with you and being so ill. When I felt really frustrated, I'd go down and use the bolt cutters <laughs> and on a piece of pipe and it was just, well, just go snip. Uh, so I interviewed Jennifer Jones and made a song which I call Woman on Wheels. So um, the first thing she said to me, and I went to record her, and I recorded her for four hours. And she just wanted me to know everything. The first thing she said was, I'm a woman on wheels. I'm a woman on wheels. But I still got my brain. I'm going to tell you how it feels to be your own railway train rolled down to the corner. Put on your brakes. I'm going to tell you what it takes to be a woman on wheels. Roll on over the holes, the bumps, the cracks, roll on. Do you remember that day we were running for the train and my tire went flat? Roll on. That man over there, the one under the hat, trying so hard not to stare. You get used to that, still is better than looking, than a looking away. You get that every day. You're a woman on wheels Roll on Pity me and I'll pity you Roll on All they ever want to talk to me about Is the things that I can't do Roll on Peggy Seeger in Ifley. Well, the lead singer of Oyster Band, John Jones, is in many ways the patron saint of Folk on Foot. He's been walking from gig to gig for years. We catch up with him on the way to the Wickham Festival in Hampshire, and he introduces us to the merry band of reluctant ramblers who join him on his celebrated walks. Just looking at your T-shirt. Uh, is this a John Jones and the Reluctant Ramblers T-shirt? It is Ramblers a Reluctant Ramblers T-shirt, indeed. Yeah, and what does it say on the back here? Let's this one, I think, is from... Spine of England. Oh, Spine of England number two walk, that was. That right. was um, last year, I think. I came in 2013 on the South Downs one, 
and that was the first time I ever went out walking in a brand new pair of boots and it was 16 miles I thought I was going to die. <laughs> How were your feet? Well, it was my legs, really. I, I seized up completely, but it got me into walking, and I now go walking every week. It was fabulous because we were right on our own doorstep, and we didn't know that this was all here. So it really opened up a lot of opportunities for us in the future to go walking. You got the bug? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and totally. what about the music side we, of it? Yeah, we love the music. The crack? The crack, the, the, it's great, <laughs> the music's fun. Um, yeah, just to round it all off with music in the evening is just perfect. How does he do that, do you know? Because I mean, when I'm at the end of a long walk, <laughs> yeah. I want to lie down and go to sleep, I probably know. after a couple of pints or something. Yeah. Uh, but he stands up and know, gives seems, his all. How does seems, that work? I don't know whether he's just energised by it. I don't know. Well, that's the opposite effect for us, I suppose, doesn't it? But yeah, John seems to just be energised by the whole experience, walking and being in the outdoors and getting together with a group of people that you've never met before. Walking through Arkansas I think the walking has become even more important. I think I treat it with more respect now in a, in a strange way. And not as gung-ho as I'd become. It can be a drug like anything else, you know. Yeah. I often say it's my drug, my gym, and my church. Because this is the closest I get to spirituality. I'm on my way to John Jones and the Reluctant Ramblers on the way to the Wickham Festival. We'll also bring you an episode recorded at the Small Halls Festival on the Isle of Skye in November, featuring musicians including Rachel Newton and Duncan Chisholm. More details to come. But we start season four in the company of Nancy Kerr. For 12 years she lived on a narrow boat, sailing the canals and rivers of the UK, an experience which inspired a number of her songs. There's lots of different ways of doing it. That's what I loved about the canals. There's so many people there for lots of different reasons, having different kinds of lives. You know, lots of people living as we were there because it's affordable, or it was. It was an affordable way for us to have a lifestyle we wanted. And then there's people making a statement about living off-grid and living privately and being among nature. And then all sorts of people who just want to enjoy the history of the waterways or, you know, it's just, there's no one identity. Did you ever fall in? Yeah, all the time, about once a month. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And one time I was on my own and I fell in. I imagine I looked a bit like one of those sort of mythical selkie creatures from, you know, northern mythology. I was kind of covered in slime and I just kind of poked my head up from the side of the canal with my hands on the side of the towpath and asked two men to lift me out. So there's a swing bridge here. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a lot of these. This one's locked open, but there's lots of these because the canal was actually a defence during the war. So they had lots of swing bridges that they could then make sure couldn't be swung, basically. To keep so, the enemy yeah, out. to keep the yeah. enemy out. Would yeah. you like to sing on the bridge? Let's sing on the bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds brilliant. good. <laughs> Still the drone of the tiller 
trailing its river tone under your hand. Set the brass to the wet grass, out of the water and onto the land. Turn your hand to the tiller, time the old river ran into the sea. Sunset forces the day down, spraying white horses are waiting for me. Nancy Kerr along the towpath of the Kennet and Avon Canal. So, we have another magical season of episodes to inspire and delight you. It all kicks off on Friday, October the 18th. Get ready and tell all your friends that Folk on Foot is back. Mm-hmm.